Good morning. This is day 12. And I woke up to the sound of rain. It was it seemed to be non-raining all night, but so what I've done, this is they've got this kind of little hut thing. This is Caribou big still. They've got a kitchen area. So I've literally just sort of run up the field, or should I say down the field, with all of my gear. Um and my tent, which I just put over the back of the chair and I'm trying to dry a little bit. Mainly because of the weight. I don't mind it being wet so much as it's just really heavy when it's when it's all wet and it's like holding puddles. So I'm gonna hang out, have some breakfast, a nice cup of tea, and then hopefully I have one of my YouTube videos will have uploaded as well because it's Wi-Fi in here. I can get the tent dry and then just pack my bag and go. It's still early, it's not as early as I'd like, it's 20 past six. <clears throat> I was hoping to be gone by now actually. We're all faffing around with my tent and my gear is taking way too long this morning, but hopefully I'll be out of here by seven. Because today I've got to go quite far. I'm going to Planegla Fishery. That's where I want to go. There's not many places to camp on route. There was one bang on the route, but they've decided not to open this season, which is a shame. So I have to get to the place and then I have to go another mile, <clears throat> excuse me, another mile to the campsite. And of course, a mile back again in the morning. But it'll be all right. My foot, there's something with my foot on my heel, which doesn't feel good this morning. I'm not sure what to do about it. I think for today, I'm probably just going to ignore it and press on. Um, take some ibuprofen, hope that I can just make it through the day. Starting to worry that I'm not going to get there by Wednesday now and I'll have to take another day. But if I'm going to get there by Wednesday, it means that today and tomorrow have to be really big days. And then Wednesday, a shorter day. But we'll see how I go. If I need to take another day, I'll just take another day. So no big deal. So I'm already underway. It's about quarter past seven in the morning. It stopped raining. There's a. Is that coming out? There's a. So I was going to say there's a sunrise there. Yeah, this is what we're talking about. It's murky. So I'm trying to push myself quite hard this morning so that I can make good progress. I'm a little bit nervous about the campsite on their website, it said that you have to arrive before 5 pm. And knowing me, that's that's going to be hard to do. So I'm going to just try to walk at Rob's speed, <laughs> which is not possible really, but I'm um, just trying to go a little bit faster than I do normally at least. And hopefully I'll make, make it there in time that I can get a place. So it's pretty grim. It started raining again. Just been going through a couple of sheep fields, which has been fine, just stepping it out, trying to get a good pace going, which is all right so far. I've had a couple of little slopes. This bit's pretty. Got some nice, some nice little wall here with some flowers and stuff. So it's all going all right, but I still haven't made that much progress, really. I've only been walking for actually just under an hour, so made a bit of progress, I guess, but long way to go just came across this sign access to this lane is at your own risk it's, i find that a kind of baffling sign <laughs> what am i expecting a lion something to come out and attack me all i can hear is cockerels cows and sheep and there's a bit of uh i suppose that's horse poo or something on the green um, if there's some kind of way of unnerving walkers, I think they, they can do that with a sign like that, just be vague, not to actually tell you anything. Look at this, this is a great big dip. I've just come from up there and uh, I've got to walk all the way down these steps. And then there's a little bridge at the bottom crossing a stream. And then I've got to go all the way up on the other side. I'm in a field of horses now. They all just got spooked and ran up the hill. I'm going to try and give them a wide berth. I'm not really sure 
have to deal with horses. They're obviously, I guess, used to people. Not sure whether to walk straight through or go round them. There's a little foal and its mum. Oh, they look really cute together. Wasn't sure whether that means they'd be aggressive or not. This is a really steep hill to go down. So I just went round them. Uh, is that my path? Could be. Oof. It's a stinky. Alright, so it's now 20 past nine in the morning. And I've just reached Bronnygarth. I think this is Bronnygarth. Seems to be a little village. It's a proper like stone steps down here. And yeah, there's a sign here, Castle Mill and Check that way. So I've got to cross this road. Alright, first checkpoint done. So as you can see, I've been blessed with a little bit of sunshine. It's been raining pretty much constantly up until about 15 minutes ago. So everything is soaking wet on me. There's a lot of condensation on the inside of my waterproofs as well, which is not very nice. But I'm going to make the most of the sun just to air myself out a bit. So I was reading about this in the book. I've got a choice at this point. Um, there's a permissive path that goes through Castell uh, E. Warn and Chert Castle where I actually go over the viaduct or I can continue on with the Office Dyke official route which is up that lane there. So I've chosen to go on the permissive route. It says it's closed until the 1st of April. It's only open from the 1st of April until I don't know if that's the end of September or the 1st of September, but here I go. Slightly um, risky because it's not going to show up on my GPS, so I'm hoping that it's going to be well signposted. that it also doesn't look very far, and it should be shorter than following the official route, which is, to be honest, a bonus. I could do with that today, but well, it's still very, very wet. Lost the sun again. Battle of the Gap of Graves. Prince of Wales and Henry II, oh, versus Henry II, how the Welsh stopped the much larger Anglo Norman army. The year 1165, Henry, King Henry II's aim. The total annihilation of the Welsh race. The place, the dark, impenetrable forest of the... Hmm, how do you pronounce that? Sayriog Sayri Valley? Right, must continue. At the side of this tree, massive, massive oak tree. Ginormous. So through this kissing gate, and across this meadow, I guess. Just really hoping that it's well signposted. Ah, oh, there's a flag behind the trees. I wonder if that's already Chirk Castle. We're sort of on a hill, so it could be. I'd be very happy if it is. There's a cafe there, apparently. Quite like to stop and have a snack in it. So this is Chirk Castle. Unfortunately, it all looks a bit closed. There's the Castle Gardens entrance, all padlocked up. Information about the gardens. Oh, it looks very pretty. So there's a nice bench there, I'll just, there's benches everywhere actually, and not a soul in sight. I mean it's not that early, it's 10 to 10 in the morning. So I'll just stay and have a drink and get moving I guess. 
So I'm actually a bit worried that I've missed the aqueduct. I really wanted to walk over the aqueduct with the canal and I see it's on the bottom of this map it just says aqueduct right in the corner here. And if I, my map's getting quite wet from the rain this morning, but um, if I go back a page I'm pretty sure that it's, I haven't got the map for that section, it's just sort of to the east here but this is joining up with the bottom of that bit so damn I haven't got much choice really but to carry on so basically I'm here where the castle is well it's nice to come up here and everything I'm glad I did um, and the route's probably shorter because I can take this little path here which joins up again with the offers dike so that's no problem I'll actually be en route but I was really hoping to uh, at least see the aqueduct um, I wonder if that's even possible now because I might have gone too far north to be able to get a glimpse of it unfortunately um, and obviously if I'd found somewhere to camp last night in Chirk instead unfortunately there's not many places around that area to camp so I didn't do that so I might have to come back and do that another time you never know maybe I'll go up high over here and be able to see it Mm. or maybe there's another aqueduct but I doubt it I think the big one that I saw the picture of in the book is that one down there just met a really nice young lad who's also doing the office dike he's walking the opposite direction just doing a section of it um, which was really useful because he told me where he was camping last night um, so I'm not going to go quite as far as what I thought because that seems that it's going to just take me way too long I probably won't get there until about 9 p.m. And the campsite had a cut-off entry time of five o'clock, so I'm just not gonna make that. Um, so he showed me exactly where to go on the map and it's only um, a five minute walk or 10 minute walk off the Office Dyke route, which for me is perfect. Um, so my plan is to go to Trevor, which is before, and then find a place have a nice lunch I'm treating myself today I've decided after all the rain and um, get some Wi-Fi find out try to book that campsite and then go there oh and the other thing I was chatting to a woman in the castle grounds and she said don't worry you haven't missed the spectacular aqueduct there's only a little baby one in Chirk um, but the really spectacular one is coming up. So I'm so relieved that I haven't missed that. I would have been gutted if I couldn't have seen that. That was going to be like the highlight for me. I just find it fascinating. I don't know why I see all the canal boats going along the top. Hopefully there's one crossing when I go across it. I'd love that. really good progress now I've been following a little lane for a while so it's quite quick walking now on the other side that I think that's the town of Trevor um, which I'm going to come across quite soon and my plan is to actually have lunch in a pub over there I'm a little bit running out of main meals and I can't live on biscuits alone I've got quite a few biscuits left so um, hopefully I can find something It'll be nice over there. And then um, book my campsite for tonight. I feel a lot happier. It makes all the difference, doesn't it, when you see somebody and um, you've had a rainy morning. You don't feel like you're going to make it. Someone coming the other way just gives you the information, reassurance, and puts you back on track. I feel much better now. And the sun's come out. And my clothes have dried. So what can be better? Yes, I still smell.
So I'm now following the canal and there was actually a sign there just saying this way to the aqueduct. It's very exciting. I think it's another couple of k's. There's only one k to a symbol of a pub on the map. I just hope they're open on Mondays because a lot of places aren't, are they? Or maybe there's a cafe or something else nice that I can get some food from. Almost there. Here's the first canal boat that I've seen. Proper one that actually seems to be people living on it. I saw another one go past earlier but it was too far away to film it. Beautiful, eh? Anything on on the canal path? What I've just spotted in the distance. Can you see it? Oh yes. It's the aqueduct. Hello. So this is the aqueduct guys. Pretty cool to be crossing it at the same time as a boat. I'm actually walking faster than the boat. So this is from the top of the aqueduct, here comes the boat. So there it is. That is the most exciting thing I've done for ages. That's very cool. And over there is my pub. Just cross that bridge. I'd say love like this. Crossing the aqueduct, having a really nice pub lunch, had a big old veggie burger and some chips. So I'm feeling happy again. I don't think I ate enough by far yesterday and I haven't really got proper meals left so I need to get myself a decent meal from somewhere every day. I'm starting to feel a bit lightheaded after five, six hours of hiking with nothing to eat. So all happy again. It's just fascinating watching the canal boats. I just 
find it really interesting. There's a lot of people got higher ones, some obviously got their own. Seemed like a friendly crowd. Yeah, so I booked myself into a campsite that's about three, three or four miles away, which is not far. So another couple of hours of hiking, I should be there. It's now 1.30, so that'll be a good time. And apparently there's an outdoor shop in Kangochlin. Um, so if I can find myself some new trousers, I'm just going to throw these ones away and buy some new ones. That would be the ideal scenario. I just hate my trousers right now. <laughs> I don't hate many things in life, but these trousers, they're testing me. Back with the sounds of nature again. It's actually really nice just to spend an hour with some people. because I've spent a lot of time alone the last couple of days. But an hour is kind of well, enough. <laughs> Happy to be back on the path again. Listen to the birds and the rustle of the trees. Love these kind of paths. Nice underfoot. Nice light. The smell of the trees. This is turning out to be a great day. Look at this beauty. Phew. I don't have any food for you. Just admiring you. I seem to be more in horse territory than cattle. I haven't seen any sheep for a while either more horses over there. So this apparently is the Trevor Hall Wood. It sort of looks eerily dead if you just look straight ahead of you not much green to be seen. <laughs> it looks kind of interesting. And all the same colour. It's all sort of brown. The floor, the trees, the branches. Quite pleasant walking on it though. Looks like I'll be on here for a little bit. So I'm up high again, overlooking the Vale of Kanglochen. Kanglochen. Yes, so I'll show you here, look, on the book, on the map. So I'm walking near that red line above it. Getting some nice views. It's going along the edge of a sheep field here. Climbed up here, it's all quite steep. I do feel like I'm fitter than on the first and second days though. Ought to be right. better views. The sky seems to have gone cloudy again so I'm hoping to get to my campsite before it rains. We're due for more rain. Little sheep up there. Hello. So I think I'm probably maybe an hour or two still away from the campsite. I've heard that there is a camp shop in Kanglochen actual village or town so if I can make it there before the shops close that would be great if I can get myself some new trousers if not I'll consider actually going first thing in the morning that's how much I hate my trousers right now
much nature up here. So can you see in the middle of the screen there, there's actually a mound and there's a castle on the top of it. Or a kind of ruin of a castle. So apparently, my campsite for tonight, I've got to walk past that castle and then left down a little road, which might mean that it's down at the bottom of that. I've done 15 miles already, so my feet are getting a little bit sore now. But it doesn't seem very far away, just around the corner really. And I don't think I actually have to go up that hill, I just kind of go round the bottom of it, so that'll probably make it easier, make it all downhill. I got really close to the castle, but look at this view, the colour of those mountains. It's completely different scenery up here. All this stone, I'm not very good at knowing the difference, but the stone looks like a different colour. There's a lot of tourists come up here to look at the view. And this little road here on the left is the one that Apparently, if I walk down it for about 10 minutes, I get to my campsite. I'm pretty happy about that right now. My feet are hurting and it's not easy walking on road, actually. It feels a lot harder. Oh, there's a cattle grid. Got to negotiate. The sheep really don't mind people up here. They're not very scaredy cat. You can go right up to them. Keep the grass nice and short, don't you? All right. So I can manage not to trip over. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. Look, there's cows and sheep in the same field. I always wondered whether they would be happy being together or not. I wonder how they interact. There's a little calf there. And then you've got the the sheep, which have also got their young with them. This is just idyllic and the weather just couldn't be better right now as well. It's a perfect temperature, maybe 19, 20 degrees, something like that. A little bit windy. Alright, so I made it to the campsite. I've just got my tent up here. It's a very hilly field. So this is the only flat spot I could see, which is a shame because I had to go so close to my neighbours that never mind, I'm not here for that long. I've actually got um, very little time. It's quarter to four now and if I want to go to the outdoor shop, which shuts at five, apparently it's two there. It's, he says it's only half a mile away, the village, but I want to have a quick shower. I need to have a little snack and drink something because I'm starting to feel a bit faint. I just think I'm not actually eating enough or drinking enough, probably because I'm a bit tired and need a good rest now. So I've just, by stopping here, I've added another day to my trip, basically. So it looks like I'll be finishing on day 14 um, instead of day 12, which is what I originally planned, but that's okay. I'd allowed a couple of extra days to, um, you know, just in case I needed a day or off or something. So that actually is fine. It doesn't change anything. So now I need to be in action. My feet are quite painful. Um, I think they just need to dry out a bit, actually. They're, they seem very white. It's like they've been soaking up water all morning, which they probably have with all the rain. Luckily it's not raining at the moment, I'm not sure if it's supposed to rain later, it looks a bit dark over there, but um, we'll see. Hopefully by this evening I should have some nice fresh trousers and maybe a new t-shirt would be quite pleasant. Fingers crossed. This is Kangloffen. Making good time, it's half past four, so hopefully I'll get to the shop in time. And also pick up some nice food. Such a pretty place. Wow, look at this. There's the 
train station. This is the main high street up here. Look what I got. I got myself some nice trousers as well. It's an extremely chatty guy telling me that he was going to walk across Scotland with an 88 kilogram pack wild camping apparently and he was um, trying to tell me that my tent was crap <laughs> and that it wasn't wasn't good at all so I told him no it's, it's really good actually it's a really good one it's not crap at all <laughs> and yes it has side at the doors not at the end and yes you can put the whole thing up all together and you don't have to put the inner up first Everything he was saying was wrong with it was just not true. So it's kind of amusing. I was in, I was like edging towards the door trying to get away. He kept going on and on and on. There's this other guy waiting to be served as well. Friendly though. It's funny. He told me I couldn't use the changing room, the fitting room, because somebody had used it within the last 20 minutes. So we, I had to wait another half an hour or I could just put them on over the top of what I had. That was fine in the middle of the shop. <laughs> it's a bit random. Anyway, I've got myself some trousers and they seem to fit. It's a bit hard to tell putting them on over the top of some leggings, but fingers crossed. I'm going to swap them out. Ooh, better eat my ice cream. It's running all down my finger. And I've got some yummy things for dinner as well. I've got some nice pasta. Mmm. It was so good. Salted caramel.